because I'm very curious about humans, and up to then I thought I'd study humans through one academic discipline, and I thought, I realized that maybe that wasn't the best, and I realized that maybe anthropology could provide more answers to my, to my curiosity. I just like knowing how people ticked and why they did certain things. Uh, so the approach of anthropology really seduced me very quickly, and I decided to change everything. <laughs> My first degree was a, a joint degree in art history and German literature um, and certainly the art history side of, of, of my degree sort of took me into anthropology because in studying art history I realized that although the objects, the, the art as it were, was very interesting to me I actually got more interested in the makers of, of, of the art. Archaeology always interested me as a very privileged way into the past that isn't filtered or biased by documentary textual evidence. I, I came to anthropology as a master's student and, and did a conversion course and then went on to do my PhD. But I've always retained that interest in the sort of material side, which is why I really love teaching on the Arcananth degree. As opposed to other universities, the Oxford definitely has quite a special take on it in the sense that in your second and third year, the core papers you're going to have are still going to be very much balanced between archaeology and anthropology, so you're still going to do half and half, more or less. What Arcananth have in common is that they are both studies of material culture, and increasingly I see them as indivisible subjects. To understand what it is to be human, you have to understand how we engage with the material world. Where textual evidence isn't available, the material remains are our only means of accessing vast stretches of the human past. Most of our students have never done anthropology before and some of them might have had some practical experience of archaeology maybe volunteering at a museum or you know joining a dig over a summer break or something but for most of them the material is really very new and they sort of get dropped in and you know have to sort of swim very very quickly. So in the first term I was still sort of like okay so at, like people were throwing information at you about absolutely everything um, from the origins of humanity to now, and you're, and you're trying to make a sense of all of it, that, that's a bit hard. We had six lectures a week, um, five at the Institute, one at the Pitt Rivers, uh, two essays a week. It also involves practical classes and object-focused sessions in museum settings. We got to analyse your diet through your, cutting your nails and learn about absolute and relative dating. I asked my tutor, I was like, listen, I'd like to study some sort of anthropology of Europe, of France, uh, I'm interested in questions of immigration, of family, and she was like, I know this person, she's up for it, uh, she's a professor here, go see her, and it worked out really well, so it's, it was, I was just amazed by, by how, well, how, well, how well it worked out, uh, and that's typically the sort of thing that Oxford does, it sort of realizes your, <laughs> your, your dreams, and I was just really happy. There's also dissertation research that you undertake in your final year, but we encourage students to approach material culture using both archaeological and anthropological perspectives. So again, we're trying to maintain that equal weighting throughout the degree course. You have to be in a constant open-mindedness about everything. You have to be able to draw up. If, if, if you're writing an anthropology essay, you really have to um, be extremely open-minded about it and try to um, go past your prejudices. Um, in archaeology also, you're going to have to draw upon history as well as very scientific-based things, so it's, it's very, I mean, that, that, that's why I love it so much, because it's very cross-disciplinary. Students are often surprised at the extent to which we pitch the way we look at certain topics in relation to current news items, in relation to current affairs, in relation to current issues in the media. The student that would enjoy this course is a student just kind of curious about about the life of others, but actually, oddly enough, also that our own lives. Because of course, it's, you know, they, they look you look outwards to sort of understand how other people live, um, and in doing so, it, it very often throws up answers to our own questions of you know, why why do we live the way we live? There's amazing facilities. You've got the Ashmolean. You've got the Pitt Rivers right on your doorstep. The museums we have in Oxford make this a really fantastic place to be and I think our students you know get a lot of exposure to, to work in the museum to go and actually see the bones that we've been talking about. Other facilities that are relevant to undergraduate teaching include laboratory facilities which we have um, both at the Institute of Archaeology and at the research laboratory where we do the radiocarbon dating and also stable isotope analysis of 
uh, human and faunal and other biological remains to understand ancient diets, for example. The tutorial schedule is pretty intense. So students are always either writing or working on uh, a tutorial essay. Arkanam's tutorials seem very different from other tutorials. Um, you're sat around in their office on nice comfy chairs and you just talk about the essay and talk about the views. The tutors don't consider that the essay is the answer. The essay is the beginning of the question and then you find the answer with them. Often it goes in directions that are really productive and every tutorial then becomes a really unique occasion. Uh, but I always feel a little bit nervous going in because I don't know if we're going to get from A to B or if we're going to reach C or D or E or F. But for that reason, they're really, really valuable. Your tutor is always going to say, well, this could be approved. You could have added this case study. Why didn't you look at this guy? Why did you put this view? Oh, I disagree with you here, but good point. You really do learn how to formulate your ideas concisely, make an argument clearly, move on to the next thing, use evidence. Students very quickly pick up the kind of approach that we require and we just take it from there. So we see students just taking off within the first term. Students typically write at least one essay a week, sometimes two. Um, so they're reading a lot and they're writing a lot. You do get given quite a lot of books and having to plough through that and then making notes that are that's relevant. So it involves a lot of reading, a lot of research, but also time taken to kind of digest the material and to make, to sort of develop an argument on that basis. We don't expect any particular um, A-levels, apart from obviously very good A-levels. The interviews are really fun. Um, the actual interview process, not just the whole thing that surrounds it, but the actual interview itself. So a lot of what we're looking for are slightly more intangible sort of qualities to do with curiosity, thinking about the world, asking ourselves, well, why is it that we do things the way we do? You're given um, material to read beforehand and you have to analyse it and then you come in and talk about it and what you think. And then there was an array of objects on the table before you and you got to pick one and talk about it and say what you think it was and how they think it was used. It's really about how you can engage with texts and materials and anthropological thoughts. I always say to students um, that I'm interviewing that it's really our chance to find out about them over and above what we can read from the application itself and that as far as possible they need to relax and enjoy it so that they can actually engage in a thoughtful conversation. My first interview I felt went appallingly. So my second interview, which was at St Peter's, I just thought, I don't care anymore, I'm just gonna say what I like, say exactly what I think it is, even if I think it sounds stupid. And I just went for it and I got in. I would strongly encourage students to do extra reading, to visit their local museums, visit their local ethnography museums, visit their local university libraries to find out more about these subjects. There's no set career, unless you want to be an archaeologist or an anthropologist, apart from those, there's no set career in this course, which is great. A bit frightening, but great. Some of them go off to the academics, lots of them go off to do other things. And it's just great to see how the three years here can really make them start thinking in sort of anthropological ways. We have students doing a whole range of things. There, there doesn't seem to be any limit to what you can build on an Arcananth degree. We have students who've gone into law, into medicine, into, of course, areas of anthropology and archaeology as well. I would love to do a master's in material culture and vis visual anthropology. I'd love to work at the UN, that'd be awesome. Uh, a, a thing I've been developing more and more this year, and I, so something I'd really like to pursue is do documentaries. It seems to prepare students for a very broad range of careers that involve appreciating others and their perspective.
I would say follow your passion, follow what you're interested in, um, because it's very intensive, it's uh, a large chunk of your life, and in various ways it will inform the people you meet and the experiences you have thereafter. So it needs to be something that you really care about.